Hello folks and welcome to Manjaro Linux XFCE Desktop. How would you like to have a method of backing up your stuff, your personal files, during startup, whether you log in or log out? I'm going to show you a couple of different options that you can do putting stuff in your startup and session folder to, uh, to, to achieve that. And I'm going to be using rsync for that process, something that you already have built into your system. And uh, Anyways, folks, I'm going to talk about uh, two devices that I have for my guinea pig, whether you want to use both or just one or the other. I have an NVMe drive that's currently mounted uh, in my computer and also a USB solid state drive connected to a USB 3 cable. I'm going to show both examples today using uh, automated and semi-automated backups. Hopefully you've seen my video on GRSync and RSync. If not, I encourage that you subscribe if you're not a subscriber and watch those videos. I'll read my about section if you're a brand new user and uh, also my community tab. Go investigate uh, how to do keyword searches on my 100 plus videos. In either case, folks, welcome. 1920 by 1080 is what I'm filming in today. Things are about to get smaller. I have this blown up rather large. So uh, click your gear symbol on your YouTube player and adjust your screen resolution accordingly. Larry is our user for today and it's just a made up name and I'm going to use Alt F4 to, to close this terminal box. And I'm going to first talk about this guy right here. Your uh, settings manager, session and startup. Application auto start. So you have a lot of start stuff that starts when you log in. And this is something I wrote. And I'm just using this as a demo today, folks. It, these are pretty simple to use. And it actually is just a pointer. It points to a script file. And that's why I do encourage that you uh, watch the other video because I cover writing script files a little bit uh, deeper in that video. So uh, basically you hit uh, add. You fill in the name you want to give it. You put in a description, which is optional. And then the command, I'm gonna be using a script line or script. I'll show that in a minute. And then when is it going to trigger? Here's the important part. When do you want this thing to trigger on login, logout, shutdown, restart, and the rest of the options. As you notice that most of your built in auto start application things are set to trigger in on login. And I set mine the same way. This one's triggered on login. So now I'm going to open this up. I gave it a name. I called it dual backup demos, just the name I gave it. The description I put in backup to USB and NVMe because I'm going to be using an NVMe hard drive in this example. The command is located in Larry's home folder under documents. I'm going to keep scrolling. Under a subfolder called script and the script is called back dual drive. And it's triggered on login. The, the, the cool thing about once I write this, I don't have to mess with this anymore. I can edit the script as much as I want, but I can also turn this on and off. Now this will not trigger during the next login. So far so good? Hopefully. Hopefully I didn't lose you. Now I'm going to open up Thunar, the file manager for Larry. Larry is just a made up name. So Larry has some documents. It's got some junk in here and some pictures. It's got a hello world folder, which I'm about to delete. So basically all Larry has now is pictures. So in the backup folder, I'm sorry, in the backup drive, it's an NVMe drive, which is an internally mounted hard drive on my system. If you're not too familiar with NVMe's, they, they kind of look like a solid state um, chip a board with a funny connector on it and it normally connects on the bottom of the motherboard with one screw. In other words, it's not like a USB stick where you can just unplug it at will. So that drive is one terabyte. I do have an externally mounted USB hard drive, which is also a solid state drive, but it's USB 3 based. And they both have the same amount of files because the script that I wrote I told it to back up to not only this device, but that device at the same time or sequentially because I wanted to give the demo on the both. Again, this is a one terabyte drive and that's a 200 
gigabyte or 200 gig plus. A little bit slower than the internal one. This could also, sub, you can substitute that with a serial ATA connected hard drive or maybe a serial ATA spinning hard drive or solid state drive, doesn't matter. It's an internal hard drive, no matter what. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe these files out, delete them. So I have two empty drives. Now I'm gonna to go to Larry's folder and we're gonna talk about this script right here. So in my previous video, I showed how to write a script. A script basically is just something that is used to run an action and rsync is that action. rsync stands for remote sync. Remote sync is probably something you're already using. Are you using time shift? More than likely you're using rsync already. To back up your system files, I'm using rsync to back up our personal files. To two different devices, USB one, that one, and the other device called backup, the NVMe drive. A couple of things of importance. First of all, you have a lot of choices when you format your storage devices. I just happen to use FAT32 today. You can format these with other file formats and use other tools and multiple tools to format USB storage devices or internal storage devices. You have one that should already be built in, which is called disks. And I don't know if GP is installed in here. I may have installed Gparted, but you can use that also and other tools. All right, anyways, let me move on. So Larry's script file, this one, is gonna be doing that kind of work. And you can put as many lines as you want. The nice thing about editing this file, as long as I don't edit the name and the location, I don't need to do anything with this over here other than turn it on, turning it on and off because once this is created, it points to this file. It is just a pointer. This is a pointer to this file. Hit edit and I'll prove that to you. It says back dual drive, back dual drive. It's just the name I gave it. Okay, so I don't need to do anything with this other than turn that on and off if I don't want it during the next login. But I can alter this file by adding extra lines or deleting lines to make it do work. So let's open up some extra windows so you can see it in action. Just trying to get it to that size. All right, one more time. Is that good enough? Hopefully. Just trying to get a split in between here. Okay, this will become our backup one, USB one on the bottom. So this will be the faster of the two. This is my internally mounted drive, externally mounted. I'm just giving you two examples of using one script to do both at the same time. So for me to run this, I can't just double click on that in Manjaro. I have to right click and send that as a desktop link. Now, normally it produces it behind here. So I'm gonna grab a hold of it and drag it down here where I can see it. I'll just leave the window as is. And then um, what it's gonna do is, this is now a pointer to that file. And it's gonna create two folders here and two folders up here. Cause that's what the script is doing. It's rsyncing pictures here and here and documents here and here. Now, if you haven't seen my video on, on rsync and grsync, the beauty of using remote sync rsync is the fact that I'm using the archive bit or the archive option is whenever something changes in your system, when you rerun this and you already have the folders, it doesn't have to recreate everything. I'll open up pictures to demo this. So this is again, is the internal drive. This is the external drive. So I'm gonna open up pictures in Larry's folder and add a subfolder. A hello world subfolder. And then I am going to rerun that and it's finished. Now it didn't have to resync all of these because rsync actually checks to see if the file has been changed since the last time, I'll just use one. Was that file changed from the last time you did the rsync? If it did, it resyncs it. If it didn't, it leaves it alone because it finds it to be same. 
Does that make sense? So it doesn't need to do the extra work in here and here. All it did was uh, created the hello world folders. The same thing I can go to Larry's documents and uh, we'll click back up one USB one and we'll add a document in here. Um, just call it test 99999. All right. So once I hit this, it'll resync only this file and leave all of this rest of this stuff alone. But it does verify though that none of these have changed. Now keep in mind if I have this set to run on startup, that's what it's going to do. So that's the beauty of using that in your startup folder is the fact that you don't have to think about it. Once it's done, the script is written, it'll back up your files as you add them or alter them in your document folder and sync them up during login. Their only caveat to this one is I have to have it turned on and mounted if I'm using this method here. Okay, if this is running and that script has the, um, the USB drive involved, that just has to be plugged in and ready to go when you start up and log in. If it's not online, if it's unplugged, that's different. But this one will be. So that's why I'm giving you the examples. But providing that that USB drive is already plugged in and fired up, it will do that on startup. Okay. For you folks that have internal hard drive, again, you don't have to use an NVMe. You can use a spinning hard drive or another solid state drive connected to a serial ATA cable, SATA. I'm just giving you the demo on that. So you can add as many lines as you want here. So let me give you that example. And as I edit this file, I don't need to edit this over here at all. I leave it totally alone. This will stay just like that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use the top screen to go to Larry's thing here for a second. And um, we're gonna create another junk folder. Now, look, there's a lot to be said about creating folder names. First of all, I don't like spaces and things. And a lot of times it's actually more convenient and you have better success rates a lot of times if you create folder names with lowercase letters. Junk to no space, create. And we'll throw in a file in here, why not? I'll just create an empty document called ABC. Uh, I'm not even gonna populate it with text. So in either case, we have junk two sitting here. What I'm gonna do is edit this script file. I'm gonna leave the, the shortcut alone. So I'm gonna do is open this up in a text editor. In this case, it's mouse pad. It's whatever text editor, because I show these videos in quite a few different um, Linux environments and some people like different text editors. That's okay though. Um, so where are we gonna send it to? Do you wanna do USB one or backup? Well, uh, I'll do USB one. For this one because it, it hardly has anything in it so I know it's slow but I could have also written it for backup or I could do the both a little bit later yeah let me do both but first I'm gonna create that first one so I'm gonna right click on this thing because I want to copy the whole line right click and then click in there where I have a fresh line right click and paste this way I don't have to retype everything I'm gonna click right behind the S and use my back arrow key and we're, we're gonna be doing junk too All right, I'm gonna hit delete once just to verify that I only have a single space and just in case I misclicked something and hit the space bar only once. You need to have a, this is your um, source and that's your destination. So it's gonna be copying junk two over to USB one after I save this file and rerun it. Once I made the change here, if I log out of the system and log back in, it's automatically gonna to try to make a copy of that in here, but I'm gonna do this manually. And now it's copying junk too. So let me click this one and let's alter the script one more time using mouse pad. 
And what I'm going to do this time is I am going to uh, highlight that line one more time. Or you can just hand type this. That's all up to you. I'm, you're going to have to hand type it to begin with when you create your files. I'm just cheating. Just try to make this a little bit faster. But in, in this case, I'm going to change the back end to backup. And it's got to be spelled the same way. The script lines are literal. So everything looks good. I am going to save that and rerun that script. And it should make a copy of that uh, particular junk to folder here. But it's also re-verifying everything at the same time. Keep in mind, this is doing a little bit of work. It's verifying pictures didn't change, documents didn't change, and then it's gonna go and replicate or at least check junk two down here. Is nothing changed there? Nope. Okay, this one is missing junk two. Let me replicate that. So what happens when I change something in junk two? Create another subfolder. All right, I'm gonna rerun that script. And uh, I'll just leave it closed. Doesn't look like anything happened, did it? Nope. However, Hello World is available on both sides because my script says so. Always check your spelling. Always check um, the number of spaces and everything else in there. And always, always do a manual run to verify things work. Your folder names are spelled right. Number of spaces, the name of the devices. Backup is not being spelled with lowercase letters. USB one is not being spelled with lowercase USB, that kind of thing. If the device is called USB one uppercase and the um, backup devices got the uppercase letters, then it needs to be reflected in your script. Other than that, you can probably see the purposes of using something like that. So a lot of folks are misled by thinking that TimeShift copies their personal files. Let me show you something if you are not aware of this yet. Under normal conditions, when your wizard starts, when you first open up TimeShift, if you're using TimeShift, this tells me I'm running and it's uh, made a copy of it today, is under normal condition, I just wanted to let you see, number one, it's this one's using rsync. Number two, it's uh, under users, it's excluding my personal files. Excluding, not including. If you decide to activate this, by the way, keep in mind your schedule is gonna be doing five of these per week. Your, your drive is gonna be eaten up rather quickly. Just an FYI. Under normal conditions, this utility or tool is meant to be fast because it's only copying your system files for system restores. That's the general reason why people created this tool. I'm using the same rsync tool to back up personal stuff. And it doesn't matter what folders I choose. That's my choice. And the devices are also my choice. If you only have an internal hard drive, then of course you're not gonna be doing what I'm doing here. But you are gonna be more than likely wanting to maybe use some of this method here. So if it's only the internal drive, it's maybe using these two lines for pictures, documents, or whatever is important to you. But in general, you're just copying your personal stuff, not your complete home folder. Your home folder also contains hidden stuff. And if you decide to do that one, be prepared to deal with a lot of information being copied and hopefully your backup drive is sufficient because it will be an enormous backup when you're copying your hidden files and folders. Anything with a dot in front of it. On that note, folks, thank you for watching. And uh, more importantly, I will make mention that uh, the other video, I'm gonna get rid of that shortcut, the other video on rsync and grsync is already posted. Take care.